Hi everyone. Yet again I wanted to go over some examples uh, from the exercises to really solidify the things that we're learning. Uh, so exercise 22 on page 25 of Schomberdine's text uh, works with a lot of different tenses. That's basically the name of our game here. We're going to be uh, creating tenses um, at, at different levels because now we have four, right? We have the present, we have the future, um, we have the indicative, or so present, these are all indicative present, future, imperfect, and the aorist. We use the following principal parts to uh, determine them. So one, two, three, and remember that the imperfect builds off the present with the addition of a past indicative augment, as well as the different endings, the on, s, e, Amen, ete, and then on again. All right, so that's that's the background. Those are our four tenses, and we need to know both what each one means and how to form it. So he will march. That's our giveaway that this is going to be the future. We know that the verb to march is trotello, and then you need to know the second principal part, which happens to be regular in this form, so. I will march, but then we need to make that third person. So again, we get rid of the personal ending and make it he, she, it, it doesn't matter in Greek, stratewe. Long ultima makes the accent fall on the anti penal or the penult right here. Perfect. Stratose. He will march. I used to sacrifice. Sacrifice coming from Thuo. And then used to, this is a clear sign of the imperfect. So remember, the imperfect comes from the first principal part, so we're going to have that stem, thew, and then we're going to want to build off of it with the past indicative augment, and then the first person singular ending, which is, we remember, on, s, e, slash, n, amen, ete, and then on, ethuon. And again, short, so we go back to the anti-penal, ethuon. You, singular, will run risks. Well, run risks is kendu neo. It's kind of a mouthful, but you'll get used to it. You know, you'll learn that kendinos is the word for risk, so it's kind of, it, it really is just like we can use the verb risking it in English. This is based off of a noun in Greek, or maybe it's the other way around. It doesn't really matter. So kendu neo is I am running risks. So now what do we need to do? We need to make this both future, will, and you singular. So future, again, this is a fairly regular second principal part, but you need to know the principal part, because if it were regular, you'd have to be able to know that. So can do now so, let me uh, clean up this earlier new a little bit. Uh, can do now so is I will run risks, but we need to say you will. So we go back to our primary tense endings, O, A, S, A, and then amen, at Usi, again with the new movable. So again, this is our present or our future endings here. These are our imperfect, and then we'll get to the aorist when we get there. So, but we need second person singular, which is this, ace. So, can do now, ace. You, singular, will run risks. All right, let's... Uh, pick this up and move down screen a little bit. She tried to persuade. So we have this connotive aspect with the tried, remember, and for this we need not just a ver verb for trying, but we just need simply the imperfect tense in Greek. So, and then to persuade, remember, persuade is patho, persuade. I am persuading. So we need to make this both third person, singular, she, and past tense and perfect. So imperfect or past tense at least is easy. Lost my color there. Add that epsilon, epath. And then we need to make this again using our imperfect endings, third person singular. So it could be just epsilon, but if it's followed by another word with a vowel, we'll need to infix that new. But either way, this is a short final, sending the accent back to the anti-penal. She or he tried to persuade.
Good. They hindered. So what tense is this? This is the new one. This is what we've just learned. This is the simple past. This is the aorist. So remember, we're going to need three things for this. We'll need the principal part three, and we're going to need the past indicative augment, and then we're going to need our aorist endings. Not in that order, obviously. The augment precedes. So hinder, we remember the verb form is koluo. So then we remember our third principal part in this case is regular, ekolusa. But then, because that's a short alpha, as they all are in aorist, um, we, the accent falls back on the omega, the anti-penal. Ekolusa, I hindered. Simple. But of course, it's not I hindered. It's they hindered. So what's that ending going to be? Well, again, we need to make sure we know our aorist endings, which are a, as, e, which may be n, amen. All these are short marks on that alpha. Ate, and then finally, this is the one that matters here, on. So, ekolusan. I always think these san endings sound very Japanese, but this is good Greek, ekolusan. They simple past hindered. How would we say they were hindering if we wanted to make an imperfect? Um, were hindering. So, a lot's going to remain the same. We're going to keep the uh, past indicative augment. But then instead of the third principal part with that sigma, we're going to get back to the first principal part, which is just that kolu in its stem. And then we need the third person plural ending, which is up there we can double check. Oh, yeah, that was on. So ekoluon, but really ekoluon. There we go. So stem the PIA, and then the personal ending. Good, so we can see there's a lot that's similar between these two. They end in new, they begin with this PIA, uh, but the aorist has the sigmatic, it's a sigmatic aorist, that's a tense marker, and then this typical alpha that we come to expect with the aorist. Good. Let's go down and finish up these last two for right now. I'm going to uh, leave eight and nine uh, for you all to do on your own. Let's erase that imperfect because that was just for illustration. It was just a paradigm, a paradigma. Now let's go and focus on we stay. And the verb for staying is meno. Uh, it's related to the English remain. Uh, so stay, I stay is what this means. We want it to say we stay. So what tense is this? Present. We are staying. It's not progressively expressed in English. We stay, but it, it's present tense in Greek. Uh, so we just need to add, because this was our present stem, our first principal part, our ending. Accent, as always, for the present indicative active falls on the, um, the stem. So great. Menomen. We stay. We are staying. We can do the same thing for they are writing. We remember that grapho is our first principal part for this word meaning to write. So I am writing, so we gotta make this they are writing. So what was the third person plural ending? Usi, potentially with that new movable. That's a, a short, so it does fall back on the anti penal, but we already knew that. That's the rule uh, for the present indicative active, that the last bit of the um, stem gets the accent. So men men, we stay. Grafusen, they are writing. Let's try all tenses for they are writing. Let's make it uh, they will write with an extra L on that will. Oops. So they will write. So that's going to be graf plus S plus Usi. So remember that phi, which is really PH plus S, becomes PS. So we get Grapsusin. Again, the accent falls right there. So that's the future. So uh, we have the present. Get rid of that. That's just an illustration of the future. Now let's do the imperfect. They were writing. So we need that past indicative augment. 
we use our first principal part stem, graph, and then we need the uh, third person plural, on, egraphon, they were writing. And finally now we can do our aorist, they wrote. And remember, by the way, that this could have been they used to write, they tried to write, but aorist is simple past, not much you can do, they wrote. So again, past indicative augment, third principal part, we know it's agrapsa. Again, same process, PH plus S equals PS, which equals Psi. So that's what's gone on here. It is a sigmatic aorist, but that sigma has become hidden within that PH. Now it's a PS. And then we need to make it they. So third person plural aorist, alpha nu, short alpha, means that the accent goes all the way back. Egrapsan, they wrote. All right, that should do it for now. Uh, keep up the practice, and we'll see you soon.